So this is the part two of power electronics formula and concept revision series. We are going to see about converters in this video. We will be discussing about all important type of converters, its circuit diagram and the important equations. Okay. So the first classification is boost converter and buck converter that is step up and step down converter. Now this two converters they are actually DC to DC converters means it will be converting a DC input voltage to another DC output voltage but they will be either boosting or it will be reducing the voltage levels okay so that is the functions of this converters. Now first we will be discussing about the step down converter which is actually a buck converter that is a converter which will be reducing the voltage okay. So the step down converter or buck converter can produce an output voltage which is approximately 80 percentage below the input voltage that is you are going to give a input voltage and the output that you are getting is approximately 80 percentage less than the given input voltage. Voltage input and output will be DC only but there will be a change in voltage levels that is a reduction in voltage level is happening which is approximately 80 percentage okay. Now if you see the circuit diagram it is having a circuit like this there is a VD which is an input voltage there is a diode connected parallel with the source voltage there is a switch here then there is an inductance and there is a capacitance and there is a load resistance V out is the output voltage that we are obtaining across the load I out or I zero is the output current okay. Now let us see the important equations from this step down converter we will be discussing first this session okay. Now first topic or first equation is duty cycle or represented as D. Duty cycle of a step down or a buck converter is given by V0 to VD. Now V0 is nothing but the output voltage, VD is the input voltage, very simple equation right. Next, minimum inductance. Now for deciding a buck converter like this, we require a minimum inductance of value L minimum equal to V0 by 2 IL into 1 minus D into T. Okay. So here L minimum is the minimum inductance value. We know what is V0. What is V0? It is the output voltage. IL is the current. You can see here there is an IL marked. See. It is nothing but the current across the inductance. 1 minus D where D is the duty cycle. T is the time period. Okay. And also the value for delta IL or the current across the inductance is given by the equation delta IL is actually the maximum and the minimum current in the inductance. So here it is actually marked as IL but we, we are taking here delta IL and delta IL is the difference between the maximum and the minimum current that can pass through the inductance okay. So delta IL is given by VD minus V0 by L into D into T. VD is the input voltage, V0 is the output voltage, L is the inductance. D is the duty cycle, T is the time period. Okay, so all variables we know. Next, ripple voltage. The equation for ripple voltage is given by delta V out. That is the ripple that can be, that can come across or come in the output voltage. Delta V out is given by V0 T square 1 minus D by 8 LC. Okay. All variables we have actually discussed. V0 is output voltage. T is the time period. D is a duty cycle. L is the inductance. C is the capacitance. So this ripple voltage is nothing but the ripple values that will come in the output. So we are actually going to convert a DC to another DC level. But due to some uh, non-linearities of the circuit, there can be some ripples in the output, which is actually an undesirable thing. And the value of the ripple voltage is given by delta V out. Okay, I hope it is clear. Next is minimum capacitance required is delta IL into T by 8 delta V out. So all variables we have actually discussed. Delta IL is a minimum. The difference between minimum and maximum current across inductance. T is a time period. Delta V out is a ripple voltage. Ripple voltage across output. Okay, next. Let us move to the next session of converters. So these topics that is boost converter and buck converter is one of the very important areas of power electronics. Now if you see the power electronics syllabus of either triple E branch or EC branch for both these uh, branches these two converters are compulsory okay. Next boost converter so this is actually 
the reverse of this buck converter. Here it is going to reduce a voltage level to approximately 80 percentage. Here there is a actually a boosting in the voltage level happening. Okay, so the boost converter or the step up converter produces an output voltage approximately five times the input voltage. So there is a multiplication of voltage happening or a increase in voltage happening. Okay, and the circuit is like this. So you can see that all the components used are same but the connection is different. See there is an inductance coming here. There is a diode. Now it is actually in series. Then there is a capacitance. It is actually almost the same. Then the load and the voltage output. Okay. Now let us see the equations. Duty cycle of the circuit is given by V out minus VD by V out. Now V out is output voltage. VD is the input voltage. So all these voltages are same only. Then minimum inductance L minimum is given by T V0 by 2 I0 into D into 1 minus D square. Okay. I hope you can see it. Yeah. 1 minus D whole square. Okay. Again ripple voltage here will here also there will be ripple voltages. Right. We, we are using actually inductance and capacitance and due to the non-linearities of these elements there can be ripples. Okay. So this ripple voltage is given by delta V out V0 DT into RLC. Now this RL is nothing but the load resistance. You can see it clearly here. This is nothing but RL. It is not R into L. It is RL. Okay. RL is a ripple voltage. Okay. Sorry. RL is not the ripple voltage. RL is the load resistance and we are actually discussing the equation for ripple voltage. Okay. Ripple voltage delta V out equal to V0 into D into T by RL into C. Next, minimum capacitance is given by C is equal to V out DT by delta V out RL. Okay, so all the variables actually we know. So we have discussed about step up that is buck converter, sorry, step up and step down converter that is boost and buck converters. Okay, next let us see some other type of converters also. Next converter is the buck boost converter so there are actually two types of buck boost converters and it is actually suggested by two different people so this is buck boost converter 1 and this is buck boost converter 2 okay that is it will perform step up and step down so that's why it is called buck boost converters okay so this is the circuit diagram for buck boost converter 1 and this is the input voltage applied again there is the load resistance and there is a output voltage V out and I out is the output current. There is a capacitance connected in parallel. There is a diode and there is an inductance again connected in parallel here. L is the value of inductance. I L is the current flowing through the inductance and V L is the voltage across the inductance. Now the equations are duty cycle of the buck boost converter 1 is given by D equal to V out by V out plus V D. We have already discussed what is V out and V D. Okay. Same variables only. Now L minimum or the minimum inductance is given by T V out by 2 I 0 into 1 minus D whole square. That is it is equal to there is an equal to missing. Okay. So it is equal to T V 0 T V 0 by 2 I L into 1 minus D. You can either go for this equation or this equation. Okay. That is in terms of either load current or in terms of output current you can write that is you can use either t v out by 2 i out into 1 minus d square that equation you can use or you can use t v out by 2 i l that is a load current into 1 minus t okay so both the equations you can use okay so there is an equal to sign here equal to okay next ripple voltage or delta v out is given by v out dt by rl into c okay rl into c is the equation for ripple voltage okay next let us discuss the next type of buck boost converter now talking about this buck boost converter it provides a reverse polarity output so whatever polarity you are going to give at the input side the reverse polarity you will get okay that is positive negative negative positive it will be changed and enables the output voltage to be above or below the input voltage it can be above or can be below okay so that is the buck boost converter one next is buck boost converter two this actually it is 
different type of the same uh, device or the same circuit but uh, it is suggested by a different person okay next this is a circuit diagram you can see that here there are actually two inductors there is an l1 here as an l2 here okay and the current flowing through l1 is il1 this is il2 in the upward direction then there is again two capacitors c1 and cl see here there is a load resistance and output voltage is v out then then there is a capacitance c1 also here and there is a diode so this is the circuit for buck boost converter 2 and the duty cycle is given by v out by v v out plus vd is the duty cycle and here we are assuming that vc1 is equal to vd see here we are having two capacitors one is c1 and one is cl right so the voltage across c1 we are taking as vc1 vc1 is a voltage across c1 and in order to get this duty cycle we have to assume that this vc1 value is equal to vd okay so when vc1 is equal to vd you will you can take duty cycle d is equal to v out by v out plus vd okay next next type of converter is cook converter or cuk converter okay so this type of converter is all it's also it is again providing a reverse polarity output and the capacitor c1 is a primary storage device you can see that there is a capacitance c1 it is a primary storage device for transferring energy from input to output okay the advantage of this circuit is its low input and output ripple currents here if you go for this type of converter the main advantage is that the ripple currents will be and the ripple voltage and currents will be less that is input output ripple currents will be less and the disadvantage is the requirement of a larger capacitance c1 so we have already seen that this c1 is actually acting as a primary storage device it is used for transferring the energy from the input side to output side so the c1 has to be very large capacitance and this is the disadvantage of this type of cook converter okay so this is the circuit for the cook converter and here you can see there is only one inductance is there and there is two capacitors there is c1 and c sorry there is two inductors yeah l1 and l2 is there and there is c1 and c and this circuit is mainly focusing on this c1 the most important element is c1 and the c1 is acting as a primary storage device it is used for transferring energy from the input to output side the main advantage of cuk converter is that here this cook converter is having lower input and output ripple currents okay now talking about the duty cycle duty cycle is given by v out by v out plus vd is the equation for finding the rip and the duty cycle okay vd is the input voltage v out is the output voltage okay so this is the next cla classification or category of converters which is the cook converter okay last type of converters that we are going to see is full bridge converter you can see the image of full bridge converter on screen so the full bridge converter is again a dc to dc converter only and here it is having an additional feature that it will help in the reverse current flow that is generally the current is flowing from input to output side but here it will allow to have a reverse current flow that is for example if a motor is connected to the load and it can generate a current flow back to the source okay so there will be a current flow to the input or the source side and also here again just like uh, for the buck boost converter one and two here again there is a reverse polarity of output uh, voltage okay so the output voltage will be having a reverse polarity okay so these are the important types of converters the most important one are the step up and the step down converters so we have discussed about all important types of converters in this video and we have seen the circuit diagrams and the important equations and when uh, we are doing the power electronics the classes we will be discussing about these converters one by one in separate videos okay so please stay tuned with the channel to have uh, the power electronics lectures we will be discussing all important topics as separate separate videos okay so if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching